the future of the internet looks absolutely amazing. Uh, right now, I'm tinkering around with a lot of decentralized hosting and blockchain domains, which is pretty darn powerful. It doesn't use traditional web hosts like uh, GoDaddy, where you're spending a monthly fee to host your file somewhere from a central server, or uh, having to renew your domain every single year because, uh, you know, whatever it is. I, I, I'm thinking like Chris Titus Tech at one time, I forgot to renew that, and now some squatter wants $1,000 so I can get it back. Oh, I hate Web 2.0 and how it works, but that's how the world works right now. I want to give you a glimpse into the future of how things work because I have a whole bunch of stuff on uh, the new internet. I'm not going to call it Web3 because too many scammers have done it. And I'm not even going to say blockchain anymore because, again, scammers, they ruin everything. We can't. That's why we can't have anything nice. Uh, so let's jump into what IPFS is and how we utilize blockchain domains so we no longer need hosting and we no longer have to worry about renewing a domain. So first up, IPFS. I'm just going to show a diagram. I figure this is the easiest way. Uh, traditional web on the left there, there's a central server, everyone accesses it, and then they grab your files or your website, and that's it. Pretty easy. IPFS, it's all decentralized. So everybody has their own node. And from these nodes, you will basically bounce around. And if something is really popular, all the nodes are going to have it. And it's going to be just as fast as traditional web. Now, since this is a new system, there's not very many nodes. <laughs> After this video, hopefully there's more nodes because anybody can run a node. And if your neighbor needs to access that file and you're running an IPFS node and have it, he's gonna get it so much faster than the, the traditional way. So that's IPFS in an oversimplified manner. Uh, now, how do we use it? That's the big thing. I don't wanna just say theoretical crap here. Let's get into the, the meat and potatoes, so to speak. First off, go grab IPF companion for your browser. Whether you're using Firefox, Chrome, Brave, Opera, Edge, whatever, you shouldn't use Edge. Don't use Edge. No, yeah, but it's there. So any of these, you just add the IPFS companion. You can see it up in the top right. For me using Brave, it was such an easy install. I basically just clicked install from the Chrome web store. Afterwards, I only made one setting change under IPFS and I just ticked on IPFS public gateway fallback. So if something happens with my node, it'll fall back on a public gateway. Uh, and honestly, you could just do that and not run your node. If you don't want to use a local node or share uh, that, you don't have to. So once that's done, the next thing is, what about these blockchain domains? How do we uh, resolve those? Because traditional .com addresses and things have to reference through ICANN and uh, usually a registrar. Like I've used Namecheap, GoDaddy, register.com, Network Solutions. God, are they still around? They <laughs> have such PTSD from using them. But um, these traditional places where we register these domains. Now for blockchain domains, I've used unstoppable domains pretty much since their foundation. So I think I got this a couple years ago when they were founded. And uh, this is an old one. Christitis.crypto was one of the very first ones I did. The reason why I got it back then was not for websites or anything like I'm going over today, but mainly because I had a whole bunch of cryptocurrency addresses and remembering all of that was just a nightmare like here's all the stuff i have uh, whether it's eos or or xrp or whatever it might be these are all my wallets uh that are just kind of spread around because i like to kind of mess around with all these different projects but telling people hey this is my address or or linking this big long thing man that sucks so the whole reason i bought it back then was so i could just say hey uh, yeah, send it to ChrisTitus.crypto, and then I'll get it. And pretty much every major wallet these days does it. So if you ever want to tip me in cryptocurrency, use whatever one you want. These are all the ones I support, probably more than any other YouTuber, even the crypto crypto bros, as I call them, uh, of, of YouTube. But that's not, again, what this video is about. It's about websites and using IPFS on these domains. So I haven't done much with this. I still have to pay for a bridge to Polygon because uh, since their foundation, Unstoppable Domains, much like GoDaddy and all these other ones, that's kind of what Unstoppable Domains is. It's just 
they've switched to a different one from Ethereum. Ethereum's was, I call it the millionaire's chain because you have to be a millionaire to use the thing because the fees are so high and it's so slow that I just don't think it's a very good uh, usable crypto or usable blockchain for a domain platform. And Unstoppable Domains recognized this and said, hey, we can't afford these fees. So they transitioned and bridged over to Polygon. They can still interface with the original but they're using Polygon to do all this today. So it's a, the back end, that's what it looks like, just a brief summary. Uh, and I've since, I, I'll eventually bridge this over. I'm just waiting for Ethereum not to cost so much. I just don't want to pay like 50 to to $100 to switch this over, <laughs> which I will eventually do. But today we're going to use like ChrisTitus.Wallet, which is an a uh, newer domain that I just got uh, because it was cheaper to just buy a do another domain than it was to uh, switch my original one over. So now what we're going to do, now that you got a basis of the blockchains, IPFS, how it works, is actually build or, or use the website. Now we can do a bunch of different things. We could upload the static site directly to our unstoppable domains, which I'm just going to remove this real fast. All right. So now that I've actually gone through on my phone, when I got into here, I clicked remove, it's actually pending. So any changes I make in here, like let's say I wanted to add uh, addresses to here or change something in my profile. Let's say I wanted to say Chris Titus Tech for my name and submit or confirm those changes. Uh, and then usually prompt me to submit or sign a transaction, but that's how the authentication works. Uh, specifically. So I'm going to see how long this takes. I've seen these take as long as 30 minutes <laughs> per update or as short as 30 seconds. So uh, quite a, a bit of growing pains in these er early days of Web3 or blockchain domains. Like let's build something really simple that we could put on ChrisTitus.Wallet. Uh, any HTML file or static site would work. I have a uh, christitis.com, which I built completely with Hugo that we could also use. Now that's a big site. It's far bigger than what's allowed to be uploaded here. That's why when we started this, I showed IPFS companion, you could run your own node, grab the hash. And then all we have to do is link website and then just put the hash right here. I'm actually having issues with my, my companion app, uh, from earlier. I have had this bug out on me. I probably would, uh, set up a dedicated Linux server if I was really utilizing IPF also all the time. Right now I'm going to just grab someone else's node and then just drop a simple file in there. And I have a, like a little index file. If you want to see that, uh, I'll, I'll just going to open it to send it over and we'll upload, but we can pretend like this is something completely different if we wanted. Um, and we're just going to grab this IPFS hash right here and load it. So we could go IPFS.io forward slash IPFS and then forward slash, and then the hash. Now you'll see redirecting that. So it was just, it is pulling that simple, uh, simple one from these guys. Uh, but I think I'm going to actually switch up this guide from using the companion app directly in the browser to hosting my own server. Uh, but this, this seems to work just fine. Or you could utilize the one directly on unstoppable, uh, domains as well. So I'm actually going to send this hash, uh, and say launch website and we will just authenticate really fast using my handy dandy. I was about to say notebook, my handy dandy phone, <laughs> and I will sign that. So that uh, was my signature for that. I was using Coinbase wallet uh, for the signature. And now we just wait, and then we'll see if we can't resolve ChrisTitus.Wallet to that. So the two ways to upload here was simply directly on their website. You could upload to IPFS, uh, or we actually, I wanted to kind of test this using an IPFS. I found uh, IPFS server or gateway node from uh, Git.io or, or GitHub IO. And to show you that file too, to kind of see what we were looking at, and I'm just going to cat that index.html file. This is everything in the file itself. 
uh, this is what I've uploaded. So very, very simplistic HTML file. I learned HTML in the 90s, so more than 20 something years ago, and it's still applicable today. And this is what I'm doing is it's just a meta refresh to ChrisTitus.com. But let's pull up HTTPS forward slash ChrisTitus.wallet. See what it does. Oh, there we go. Redirecting from IPFS and it just redirected it back here. So a very simple way to upload, uh, obviously big files, or if you have a lot of static files, what you want to do is get the IPFS hash and share that with unstoppable domains, just like I did using the Git, uh, github.io server to upload my, my IPFS file. But I think if I was doing a really big site, like my site right here, I would definitely uh, put this on my own node because one, I just want to make sure it's distributed really quickly. And I know I'd have full control over uh, the sharing of you know, those files and also making sure I don't have to wait for an upload or anything like that. Using IPFS, as you see, it's still in its infancy. It's still a very small network compared to what I think it will grow to. And then also using blockchain domains, which again, only like dot crypto addresses are built directly into only Brave browser. And I think there's one other browser that's also, I think, Opera. Uh, but this is going to evolve. It's where things are going to be headed than the traditional Web 2 approach because it's so decentralized. Uh, the only thing I'd say is Unstoppable Domains is a central uh, registrar, much like you'd run into with GoDaddy or uh, Namecheap, you know, those types of traditional uh, registrars. So a very interesting stuff. I want to just kind of have you tinker around with this. And again, if you're interested in this type of thing, uh, I'll leave a link down below. That's an affiliate link that you can save a little money if you use Unstoppable Domains. Uh, but uh, again, you can kind of look around. In this guide, there is another one uh, because I was looking around exactly. There's another uh, blockchain domain. There was one other one, ENS domains. And on ENS.domains, they have their own, which is .eth. But this is all Ethereum based uh, from what I saw. And again, Ethereum's really, really expensive. <laughs> so I'm kind of like, eh. So uh, right now, Unstoppable, by far the market leader in blockchain domains. It's just something that I kind of wanted to research and do more on. Um, and it's really neat. Big names like Cloudflare and other uh, traditional web companies are getting into this space. So it's something to keep an eye on because this isn't going anywhere. Yes, it seems a little cumbersome. Yes, it seems a little slow today, but we're in the infancy. We're in the very beginning of this because I see it as a big uh, boon compared to what we have been dealing with on the back end uh, with uh, traditional web. But with that said, let me know your thoughts down below and I'll see you in the next one.